We are going to be drawing a pair of human eyes today for this assignment. You are going to need a ruler, uh, your regular number two pencil, a uh, mechanical pencil if you can find one is going to be really beneficial because it's, it's so pointy and we get some details in the eye. Um, your blending stump, your tortillion or a, a tissue and your eraser, maybe a piece of scrap paper too. Okay, to start out, make sure your paper is horizontal so you can use as much of it as possible. The smaller you draw, the harder things are. And we're going to just begin by putting in a guideline, a light line. I'm going to use my mechanical pencil because, um, you know, I don't have to worry about such a big line. Okay, even if I don't use all of it, that's fine. You can always erase the extras. And then we're going to put kind of four tick marks on this line to designate where we're going to draw the eye. So if I'm measuring, I'm going to start, I'm going to make one at the end of my ruler there, at the, where the basically the zero is. I'm going to make one at two and a half. That's how big my eye is going to be, I think. Um, and then again, one at five. Right? Every two and a half inches, I'm going to make my tick marks. So let's just take a look at that. Even if they, you didn't measure them perfectly, if you, okay, if we kind of gauge it like this, if you have four tick marks, you should have three sections that are pretty close to being the same. Okay, so I'm going to erase the rest of my line. So this is where we're going to form our eyes. One of the things that's really cool is though, even though we all look different and our, all of our eyes look different, we can kind of... Um, assume that there's enough space in between our eyes for another eyeball. I know nobody wants another eyeball, it sounds strange, but you know there, that's how we can uh, measure where we're going to be able to, to put um, the nose if we were going to do that so that our eyes aren't too close together or too far apart. Okay, so now after we've done that we're going to start on the line here and we're going to begin with the top of our eyelid sketch that lightly and it doesn't go straight up and down like a hill it's going to get the highest point is going to come closest to your tick mark okay the highest point of this curve is going to come close to the tick mark right not straight up and down and we're going to do the same thing over here Kind of look at where I want the height of my eyelid to be. Highest part closest to the tick mark. We can always adjust this, you know, a little bit. Okay, then in here, I'm going to come down and I'm going to make a horizontal line. I can't remember what this is called, but we refer to it as the tear duct. Right? This, so we're just going to put a line in here. We want to try to get those the same. Otherwise, if we miss that part, it looks really odd. Okay. Then we're going to put the bottom lid, and the bottom lid is smaller than the top lid. Okay. So we're not going to draw way down here. That's going to look really strange. We're going to stick closer to the center line. I'm going to sketch it lightly. And I'm going to go right to this line here, to the bottom of that tear duct. You can change the shape a little bit. Sometimes when you, you get done, especially when you're trying to do two things that are the same, sometimes you look at it and you're like, mm, I think I want to adjust it. Okay, and then before we go too much further, kind of look and see, do they sort of look the same? Do you need to change anyone a little bit? Need to change anything before we go any further? Okay. So the bottom is a little flatter here than the top part. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to find the center of this line. I'm going to give it a little mark. That's not where your pupil is going to go. Okay, but that is going to sort of show us where the center. If you want to measure it, you can measure it. But I think you guys are, you know, getting used to kind of eyeball estimating. 
Okay, and from that, that's going to be the center part. We're going to build our iris, or the colored part of our eye, around that. Really important thing with the iris is that it is perfectly round. Okay, if you do it straight up and down, it's going to look ridiculous. Okay, one thing we can say is that the iris is going to be round. Okay, and we're trying to center it around that just to make sure that we get it in the right place. Now you notice when I'm doing this that I'm not drawing a complete circle. If I had a complete circle, that would show the sclera or the white part at the top. We don't see the white part at the top of the eye unless we're kind of in shock. So after we put that in, then we want to look at the space. Okay, and the space of the sclera or the white part, if you add it up, it should be as big as the space taken up by the iris. So you can see mine are a little too small. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to change those and I'm going to make it bigger. All right, we got to take up more space. That's kind of one of the hardest things, I think is deciding just how big that iris should be. Okay, we can always go in and um, clean things up afterwards, right? That's what we draw lately. Okay, now I'm a little bit happier with that. I might need to shorten this up here. Okay? Perfectly round, as round as we can get it. And then comes the eye, the um, pupil. That's tough. So we're going to make a plus sign. I erase the middle so I can really find the middle of my iris here. I'm going to put a plus sign really lightly because if I put a plus sign in it, not that anybody has that in their eye, that can help us to form the pupil. The pupil's got to go dead center. If it doesn't, you're, you, you end up with a person that looks like kind of, you know, a madman or some type of a zombie. So we got to get that in the middle. We really want to try to get the two of them the same size. Okay, and then of course we're going to erase parts of that, right? Here, clean that up a little. I'm going to get this line now out of the middle of my eye. All right, we want to get rid of that guy line as we start building things. Let's going to double check. Eyes might be a little far apart. That's okay. Okay, now. Before we move further, we just want to check, make sure things look like they're in the right place. Okay, what's important right now is that my sclera or my white part is about equal to the space of my iris, that I've taken up enough space. It's not too small. Okay, the pupil is in the center. You can kind of sketch that in a little bit. Don't get too heavy to show where it is. Okay, my pupil is round. I've got my tear duct. Now I'm going to go and kind of round this a little bit. Okay, and now we're going to add the eyelid. And when you put the eyelid in, most times it's going to follow the line of the eye. Do it kind of lightly. And then we want to look at this space here, right? Because um, even though our eyes aren't exactly the same, both of them aren't perfectly the same. We want to get those as close as we can. So that's just our lid, right? That's not our eyebrow. We'll get to that part later. Okay, now this next line that we're going to put in is our tear line or our water line. Okay, and that's not going to go all the way across, but if you look at your eye, you will see part of a water line. That's the inner lid. I'm going to put that in there and start from 
either side depending on the angle that you're looking. And let's see just a part of that. Okay, everything is still really flat right now, right? This is not looking three-dimensional at all. Um, and that's okay. Whoops. Just, okay, that's that's okay. We don't we don't need to worry about that yet. Okay, we might also see part of that, depending on how heavy your eyebrows are, part of that inner lid underneath here as well. Okay, we usually have a little bit of a crease under here. Not because you're old or wrinkled or anything, but your eye is three-dimensional, right? It's got to come out and close. So we might put some lines in there to sort of designate that. I'm going to add a couple lines in here. If I do this, this is kind of the edge of where my nose would go. And from our nose, if we lead straight up, we can put in a line of our eyebrow. Okay, now think about the eyebrow. We're just going to sketch in a, where the eyebrow is going to be first. You can build the eyebrow over the top of it, right? We don't want to get in here and make big bushy eyebrows or really stylized eyebrows yet. We want to make sure they're in the right place first. Okay, so we're just going to put them there. Remember, this doesn't have to be you, but you can always use yourself as a resource, right? Or your own picture as a resource. Okay, now we got to start putting in some shading and some detail. Well, right now we can't think of this as being anything other than a flat shape. So, of course, the easiest thing is going to be to do the pupil, right? And a lot of people will start doing, maybe I'll switch pencils. Okay, a lot of people will start doing the pupil because that's easy, right? You know that's going to be totally black. But don't forget, maybe you want to add a highlight to it. And don't go too black with a pupil because then it might throw off the shading in the rest of it. So you can start with a pupil, but don't go too heavy. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly gray in my iris. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the parts that I know are going to be um, have a darker value. Okay, but I'm not going to go in and color them too dark right away. I'm just going to kind of block that because maybe I want to add a highlight or do something interesting with it around the edges. But right now, I'm just going to put some color, not color, some value into it. Okay, now we've got to start tackling the shading. Okay, well, think about this thing that you've got here, this white sclera. Well, it's actually a sphere, right? So when we shade a sphere, we have to go from dark to light to show that it is 3D. Now be careful of the parts that you're shading, that you don't shade over your waterline. Okay, but I have to make that sclera look like it is not flat. Don't be going and putting a bunch of veins in there. We don't need those kinds of details. Okay, this part, if you look in your eye, it's usually red, so we want to get some value in there in your tear duct. And the same thing here. I'm going to go dark, not too heavy. Doesn't need to be too heavy. Too light. Just around the edges. Make that look round and not flat. You know, I don't worry too much when you're doing eyes that they look exactly the same. Because honestly, if you look at your eyes, they're both like oh, there are little differences in each one. Okay, next, when the lid comes over the top of the eye, it's going to steal away some of the light. So we're going to put a shadow a little bit over here to show that that lid is coming over the top. It's also going to help when we put our eyelashes in. Make it look more convincing. I'm going to take my tortillion, or my blending stump, whatever you want to call it, kind of blend some of those values in. Let's see how things are starting to look here. Okay, now let's go into our eyelid. I think again, we're going to go dark to light. We don't need to get too dark but definitely going to be darker in the crease later as it comes forward to us. 
white around the edges. And in here. I can go back in and darken up my lines a little bit later. Okay, same thing up here. We want to show it kind of going up. A little darker along the crease. Eyelashes always come last, and they can either make or break your your picture. So you be really, really careful of those. Don't speed ahead and do those. I think sometimes even the best ones, the best drawings, don't even have eyelashes. Okay, then underneath here, we this part is looking a little more rounded and 3D, but we need to do the same underneath here. Okay, shading to make the eye rounded. Again, look at your own picture of yourself. If you took a picture of yourself, or you know, just um, you know, look in the mirror. Where does it look dark? And when you do, if you when you repeat the process over here, you know, when you do use your uh, a photo, something to draw from, don't always think that it has to look just like that photo. Remember, it's a reference, right? It's almost better that you look at something and use it as a reference than look at something and try to make it exactly the same, right? One, it gives you a little bit more freedom. And two, um, it gives you just your own twist on it, how it, you know how you make it, rather than how the picture actually looks. Probably could have gone, you know, a couple of different ways with this. I could have gone in and worked on my um, irises. But I wanted to get my eye looking so it wasn't quite so flat first. So I think that looks really strange when you see part of the drawing inside of the sclera developed, but not the outside part of the eye, right? And this is really probably the more, maybe more challenging part. Lay in your values. Lighter as they come towards you or up. Go back here. Okay. Now let's go in and I am going to tackle my. Um, this is really droopy up here. I am going to tackle my iris. Um, when you look, you know, it doesn't matter what color eyes you have, there's usually like a darker edge. to the iris. So I'm going to make that darker. And remember that the, the lid cuts over the top of it. Not always on the bottom. You can see a little white sometimes on the bottom, depending on how you're looking, how big your lids are. But not at the top. So I'm going to darken that up. And then that reflection here. I'm going to bring in It doesn't all have to be the solid. Got a little, I guess, sort of a 
extra. I don't know what this is called. A lot of times that black edge just kind of brings itself into the center of the iris a little bit more. Oops, my screen went off. And then, you know, you, you a lot of times you can put that a reflection, but that reflection, of course, can be added at the end, right? You just need to use your eraser. Don't forget your eraser is an important drawing tool. get closer to the nose, right? They're going to be darker under here. I'm not going to go in and do the nose. I'm just really going to focus on the eyes. But this would be where they kind of come together. And then go up into that eyebrow. go to do our eyebrows, remember they should be as long as your eye, okay? Let's just keep it kind of natural. And when we put the hair into the eyebrow, don't go up and down. Make your the hair deliberate, kind of following the line that you drew. And if you start at the bottom and pull up, you're going to get a more natural look. Try different weights of your pencil. I mean, you know, different... Um, how, how heavy you push it. Use a little blend in there and to get kind of the background and then add the last few. These eyebrows go this way. I always have a hard time with this eyebrow. These go this way. Let's start at the bottom and pull up. Not up and down. Kind of hard on this way. And a little blend. Oops, I think I got this one up a little too high. I look at the two of them. But again, you know, in real life, in real people, things are not always identical. They're a little bit different. So, it's a little different. That's pretty close. Okay, now I'll just go in, make sure I've got them shaded and up underneath. Make sure it goes up to the eyebrow and then into the bridge of the nose. Okay, so now we got to do eyelashes. I'm going to darken the edge first because if you were to look straight on at your eye, you would see sort of a dark line here. Like I said, the, this comes over and so um, it's going to steal away some of the light, but also with the eyelashes, it kind of casts a shadow. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Actually, let, no, let's start at the top. There's a couple ways you can do this. Um, let's use the, I'm going to start with my mechanical. I'm going to, at the top here, I'm going to go slight little scalloped edge right over the top doesn't matter if you can't see it just a little scalloped edge a 
as you'll see it in parts. And from that, at the edge, I'm going to start and I'm going to pull up. Okay, so you're starting kind of at that scallop and you're pulling up until you get to the center of the eye and you're going to go up and switch direction. As your eyelashes get closer to the center of the, the, the paper here, they're going to get short. Okay, don't go crazy here. Like I said, this can be make or break your picture. Put a few in. Make sure they're going the right direction. And because we put that dark line there, that's kind of filling in a lot of space. Step back, look at it, see, hmm, are they long enough? Maybe I could add a few long ones. Always start at the line. And these are going to be a little shorter. And that's all I need. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Got a little reflection here. It's a little hard for me to see what I'm doing. I'm going to start down where I curved this line. Pull from the line up. Into the center. Switch direction. Not quite so many. I think I got a few, a few too many in here. Okay, so you look at the difference. You can tell that is not enough, right? That just doesn't look right. So let's get in here. Some more. Maybe you want to take your other pencil, darken up along the line, okay, now let's go to the bottom. Now the bottom, we're just going to start, do not start at the, 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 the sclera. This is where you need to have that water line. Okay, that little pink area of your eye, because that's where your eyelashes come out of. They don't come out of here. That's the part that goes up next to your eyeball. So I'm going to start at this edge, and I'm going to start and pull out. When I get to the center, pull straight. Leave a lot of space between these. These can be a little straighter, really short when you get there. It is much better than to have less eyelashes than more. Okay, they will, like I said, you don't want a spider here. We can darken that line a little bit if you want it to look, you know, like more of a shadow, right? Because the eyelashes are going to cast a shadow. I'm going to do that right here. A little bit of a shadow, and then pull your eyelashes up. These are shorter. Okay, when you're done, look at what you did. Okay, how does it look? Do we want to add a highlight? Do we need to change things? Even if they're not exactly the same, mine are not exactly the same. I can tell my pupils a little off over here. It's okay. All right, what is important in this assignment is that you have all of the correct areas in the right place, right? That you have shaded where you needed to, at least two thirds of your subject here. Okay, and you followed along with the video to make sure everything is correctly placed and represented, right? Is your pupil, of, if it's not quite in the middle, is at least the right size. We can take our eraser. I have a horrible eraser here. Maybe this one will work a little bit better. We can add a little highlight if you want. I wish I had a better eraser. Add a highlight, kind of lighten up a little bit on the iris. Okay, and there we've got it.